Oh no. Hi, welcome. It looks like my, <laughs> the video I uploaded has the outro on here too. So no, it's not see you later, it's see you now. Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here. There's actually quite a few of you here already. Mark, Nancy, Elisa, Ruth, Adrian, and Tracy, thank you so much for being here. Again, if you've joined, go ahead and say hi. Maybe let me know where you're watching from. Uh, I love the interaction. I love chatting with you guys, so I'm just happy to have you here. Um, I apologize in advance if I cough a few times. My allergies are driving me crazy today, so they've been just, I've been kind of all over the place, but I'm going to try to kind of keep it under control. So, so excited. What we're doing tonight is we are making a new design, but we are also going to improve on some projects that we did last week. So we had our live last week. Robbie and Rhonda, thank you for joining. Um, we had our live last week, and I thought that the items were like okay, but they could be better. So we're going to improve upon them, and I'm going to tell you what I did. Um, I've kind of staggered what things I've pre-cut, what things we're going to cut live so we can maximize our time. So yes, I'm glad you guys made it. Um, I hope you guys noticed that I, I tried to put out the posts and schedule it ahead of time. So that way you could see starting yesterday that I was planning to go live today. So I had that set up as a reminder on both Facebook and YouTube, and I think it went well. You guys let me know if that helped you. It at least helped me stay accountable because I couldn't make an excuse not to go live. So uh, we had it going there. So just to review what we did last week, let me show you some of the stuff that we did. And again, if you join, um, I, I love to be very interactive in our lives, so please um let me know what you think, whether you like it, whether you don't. If you have a question, I love to answer questions. And we're going to have um, we're going to have time to ask those as well. So um, Ontario, Cal Canada. I almost said California because I'm so used to Florida. Hi, Marcella. OK, so let's talk about what we had last week. So this did not go poorly. OK, so this is um, again, you guys know that I love my target boards. Um, I love the Target Dollar Spot or Bullseye's Playground. I think there's a lot of use there. Um, so I did this sign. You can see it was $3. Now I have some bad news for you guys. Uh, Target no longer offers Bullseye's Playground slash Dollar Spot online anymore. So what you see in the store is what you get. Also, hey, um, okay, if you guys are here, or you're looking at it, there is at Target this teeny tiny toy mini, like miniature Target shopping cart. It's so adorable. It's perfect for a two year old. It's got little cardboard like boxes of Target foods in there. It's sold out everywhere here. Every time I check online, it's sold out. So if you see that it's in the toy section of Target, please, please message me and I will send you money to get it for me because I want it so badly for a gift. Anyway, going back to Target stuff. So this turned out fine, okay, but I mentioned that I think it would look even better with black. So we we have a black one we're going to put on. And then this was a $5 wood tray from Target. And it had this lovely line art design on it. However, this tray, I mean, we're, we're, we're pushing it to the limit. This right here is definitely too high, this ledge, but we were trying anyway. And, but this tray is very light, so it shifted. So I have another one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put tape on the bottom and see how that works. Okay. And then the last thing that we're doing is uh, we are designing a um, sign for a music teacher classroom. So I'm really, really excited. Let me know as we get going what you think, how you feel, what are your thoughts, so on and so forth. Um, so for the first project, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and work on this because the file's already in Glowforge. It should be pretty quick. So here's a brand new one, nice and clean. And then I am going to grab my painter's tape. So what I'm going to do is I'm literally just like what you're used to with other stuff is we're just going to do little loops on it. 
I put it on here. So again, let me know when you get here, where you're watching from, maybe some sort of project you're working on or questions as I do this. I'm not going to move the camera for you to see me loop tape because, you know, I feel pretty confident that you guys know how to do that. So um, we're going to kind of go from there. So we're just looping this on here. Oh, I just totally like ripped it. I um, mean, the point of this is to give a little bit more stability to our board to see if it doesn't move when the, the laser head comes by. Hi, Vanessa from New Jersey. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sorry, guys. All right, so we're going to place this on here. So now we have our tape. I think this will be enough. So um, let's go ahead. You guys know I, I just keep my camera on wheels. So we're going to wheel the camera over and bring it over to our machine. Wow, my, my water's really in the way. Okay, so now we're going to go over here, lift this up. And again, if you missed last week, the, um, <clears throat> the risk we're having is this ledge is definitely higher than a half inch. So that's out of the safe engraving area. But we're engraving in the middle here. So I'm going to tack this down. It feels pretty good. If you want to be really hardcore, you can do tape here, but I'm not going to do that. And we're going to see if this gives me a better result. Okay. Um, what are the best settings for Apple Watch bands? Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but I do have a video on them. So if you go through my YouTube channel, you should be able to find it. Um, I'm also in the process of trying to update my cut settings page on my website. I don't think that setting is on there yet, but hopefully we'll get it soon. So let's go through and I am going to share Glowforge. So let me go ahead and grab that for you. Okay, so we have Glowforge over here. Here's the file. Oh, I got to add it to the screen. Just kidding. Hold on a second, guys. All right, so we have our Glowforge right here. So you can see these are our flat. This is our flower file we used last week. I'm going to go ahead and open it. So you can see it's kind of, I, I kind of put my board like around in the same space. So I'm going to hit the three dots, set focus, and go right to the middle of the board. Mark, you can't, you said you couldn't find this board. So <clears throat> I think that this board is like one last remaining thing for the previous season, like summer. Maybe that's why. Um, that might be why you couldn't find it. Okay, so we're going to go through, we can ignore how it says medium blue acrylic up here. That's just left over from the last job I did. But you can see I have my score and we're doing birch. So the reason why we're not worried about the material that it says up here is because we've already set our focus and we've put in manual settings. When we have the proof grade setting up here, that is just really an assist so that we can assist with the focus or the settings. But because I put both of those in, we can bypass that. Okay, so let's go ahead, bring this down like this. And I think it needs to go to the left a little bit. All right, so go from here. And I'm gonna bring it up just a tiny bit more. Okay, so we're gonna cross our fingers and see if this works. So let's go ahead, press print, <clears throat> excuse me, and see how this works goes and then I'll put full screen camera on that for a second while this starts. Okay. So let me turn on my fan. I use an inline fan. It's quieter and also I can do lives with it. So let's go over here and take that out. So you see the whole thing. Here we go. So I'll let it start and then, um, Okay. So far, so good. So if it looks good for a little bit, I'm going to jump over to my computer and start working on something for our next design. I don't see it moving yet, right? <gasps> okay. Hey, Brad. Oh, it moved. Oh, guys. Okay. So I have, I think... Yeah, look at it. It moved. Okay, so don't use that method. So what is happening is it's hitting 
the back air assist fan, but it doesn't consistently hit it. So I'm wondering if, mm, do we, how, like, how experimental do we want to get, guys? What are we thinking? Okay, let's just go ahead and cancel this print. And I'm just going to flip it around and put some more tape and see if we can get a straight engrave with it. Now, obviously, this, this board's, like, done. You know, we're not, we're not going to sell it or give it to anyone. But let's see. Okay. Ooh. So it shifted. So could I put more tape on it? So I'm going to put more tape on it. Oh, Mark says drop the tray. Yeah, I'm going to do that too. I really think that this can work though. Like I really do. Okay, let me try one more thing before I actually drop the tray. Like I want, I want to do that and I want to be proper about that, but I don't at the same time. I want to see how much I can do without taking out the crumb tray. Yes, guys. Stop being proper. We're trying something, okay? Okay. So, I just want to see. And then I'll do one without the crumb tray. Okay? Like, these lives are for experimenting, so let's experiment. All right, so it's scanning. We'll let that go. And then, guess what, guys? I got two of these trays, so I'll take out the crumb tray for the next one. It's, like, it's probably so minor hitting it. Like, it's probably something so small. And I'm wondering if I just tape it if it stays there. Because, uh Here's the thing. This is why I haven't taken out the crumb tray right away. If I'm focusing on a certain spot, then the laser is going to move in accordance to that spot. So on the inside. So if I drop the tray, in reality, if the focus is in the same area, like would it still hit? I don't know. We're just going to try it one more time. So we're going to go to print. Um, it should be about four minutes, like it said last time. Once it's ready, I'll let's uh, move this over here. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for the preparing your print to, to finish. So again, we're just gonna engrave right over it because I just want to see. Um, yeah, I didn't tape the long edges too late. <laughs> I, my tape's not thick enough for it. Like at that point, I guess like that many pieces of tape is is okay for me, but that many. I wouldn't use that many. I don't want to do that much tape. Okay, let's see. So it starts off strong here, okay? And it's when it drops down to the bottom. Hold on. Like this part. There it is. Yeah, it's the fan. Okay. So let's, oops, so let's cancel the print. Okay, so now we know um, that taping, this is, this is never possible. You can't do it on the tray, okay? So let's go ahead and set this aside for now because I have some acrylic that I want to do and I don't want to have to take the tray in and out. So we'll come back to this and see how it goes. So um, I'm going to go ahead and load in some black acrylic. We're going to use it for our next job just to have it ready. Okay, so we have our next sheet of acrylic in. Let me go to, I'm gonna switch to Silhouette Studio so we can um, work on there. So let me just do a quick switch for you guys. Uh, sure. 
Okay, so you win some, you lose some. That's how it is. Uh, obviously, that doesn't work. So let's go back over, and I'm just going to put the camera so I can, like, talk to you guys. Wow, it's close to my face. Hold on. So I'm going to just put this over here so you can still talk to me or I can see you. Um, so now we're going to go through and do a, a teacher sign. So this is for my friend. She's a music teacher. She just got um, a new job at elementary school choir teacher at a good school and she's pregnant with twins. So she asked me for a sign for her door because the door still has the old teacher's name. And I was like, yes, I will make you one. And I said, what do you want? And she said, you make whatever you want. So this is whatever I want. So I had a vision of basically a treble clef and a staff, and I want it to be on a white sign and I want her name to be on there. So um, with that, I make stuff from scratch, but at the same time, like if there are good design resources, you should kind of like bundle what you have. So I have linked in the description, like a music bundle that I got. I like it because it has different musical notes and it has the staff in there. The quality of the file is really good too. Um, yes, you do have the capability of tracing it. Is it stealing? Yes and no, I don't know, but if you can get a file pretty cheap, you know, I would just do that. So, and Vanessa says, love when they say do whatever you want, it shows us that they trust our ideas. Yes, I like that too, because I can make some pretty cool stuff. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off here and we're going to do some modifications for this. My vision is to have like a, a white acrylic with um, the bars engraved, but we'll fill it in black but I want it to be 3D, so I'm going to do acrylic on top. So I need to adjust this to make it work and to maximize our time. The first thing that I'm going to do is you can see right here, here is my staff. Wow, that's really close. I double click, you, I can see that everything is a compound path. If you look closely, I'll zoom into this area, both the bars and the um, treble clef all have nodes to it they all have the point edit mode in there which means that this is a compound path and this is one big shape together this is not necessarily bad but when we're in the the business of engraving you can see that it'll engrave this entire area which will add a lot of time to our job so i want to minimize the time so i pulled from the same bundle the same treble clef that's in this um in this staff um new Glowforger and learns. Thank you. Thank you. And don't forget, if you're here and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It helps me a lot. All right. So what I did is I grabbed this extra one. I changed the color completely. And I am going to shrink this to, to basically match this size here. Okay. I'm not going to worry too, too much about an exact match because I'm going to do a little bit of adjustment that I'm going to show you in a second. Okay. So now we have it right here for all intents and purposes here. I'm going to remove the camera from me actually, so you can see me a little bit better. So hold on a second. I lost my mouse. Oh, there we are. Hi, I realized that when I took the camera off, it also takes the sound off. So sorry about that. <laughs> okay, um, Mark, I'm glad that you noticed that I'm wearing shoes tonight. These are actually slippers because I was standing on the floor for so long, my feet hurt. I'm not wearing shoes for any reason besides I wanted the cushion. 
and they're just slippers. So sorry, let me go back to sound. So what I did just to explain it is I want to take that treble clef and that black part. I don't want the black treble clef, but it's also welded onto the bars. So the issue is how do I get that out of there and how do I still have the lines behind it? So as you saw, I took the knife tool and I cut down the side here. And you can tell that it's cut in two parts because we have the, um, I went and grabbed these and I was able to change the color. So let me go back and turn these black again because I don't want green bars. So now I know that the lines behind here are what I want to delete. So I clicked and dragged my mouse and I grabbed the lines back there, but you may notice that I've also selected the treble clef that I want to keep. So the way that you can keep stuff selected but deselect one thing is the shift button. It's the same with selecting multiple things. So I'm going to hold down shift, click on that pink treble clef, and you can see one of the boxes disappears because that's the bounding box for the pink treble clef. So now all I have selected are the, the ones that I cut from the original staff so we can hit delete. Okay, so you can see we have that there. So now I have an issue because I don't have lines behind my treble clef at all. Well, don't worry, I got you. We're gonna select all of our lines here. Simply click and drag the one on the side in the middle. So not the corner that we're used to to make the entire design big, just one side. And because, um, <coughs> sorry, because these are lines, you're just going to stretch them out without any real distortion. So you can see they went behind there and we're all good there. So we're going to go ahead, right click and group these lines together because I want them to always be treated as one object. Okay. So now we're ready to start making space and we're ready to do our text. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I want to cut out from behind here where it would engrave behind my treble clef. Engraving always takes the longest. It has to go back and forth. So the less steps that we have to take, the better. So let's go ahead, grab both of these, go to our modify panel. That's the one with the circle and the rectangle. And we're gonna use an option that we don't use often. Uh, we are going to use subtract all. And the reason why we're using subtract all and not subtract is subtract will take the back of the design, but it'll also take out, it'll cut it out like a cookie cutter. So the top shape that we're using to cut with will also be gone. We still want to keep the top shape. We just want to get rid of what's behind it. So to do that, we would just do subtract all. I clicked it once. It looks like nothing happened, but check it out. So you can see the lines are empty right there. Okay, so now we have the base. So if you were making this and this is a product you would offer as to your music teachers, this is where I would save your file to keep on, on hand for, for new projects, new orders. So before I go, do you guys have any questions on what I did so far or any comments? So while I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna go ahead and type her name. This is for Mrs. Tobin. So you can see right there, Mrs. Tobin. I'm gonna click off of it one time and then click back on it one time to get out of text edit mode. So we have that gray bounding box around it. That means it's selected and it's for me, it's easier to change the font now. So I'm gonna go over to my font panel and we are using a font called Flor Florania, F-L-O-R-A-N-I-N-A. I think it's a really nice font. It works really well in this instance because it's um, kind of thicker, not too much, but it fits well into this, this area and it cuts well. So we're gonna set it up right, on, right in here. Um, I'm gonna make her name just a little bit smaller. I want it within this area right here, okay? And she likes teal, so I'm gonna get color it teal within here so we can get a better visual, okay? So now we have our name here. We're done typing, so I'm going to real quick right click weld and because not every line was overlapping like the dot on the i the t to the o uh, we also need to right click and group it okay so let me zoom in right here so let me um tell you a little bit about com no uh offsets so as you look at this name you can see that it it's almost a little bit busy you know like you know it says the name but the lines behind it make it hard to really tell 
So this is where an offset comes into play. This is where subtracting offsets come into play. You want to create space because it helps your eye distinguish the difference between certain things. So if we select our font right here, we can go to the offset panel, choose offset, and you can see there's one put on there by default. My default offset's about 0 0.095. I'm happy with that so far, so we can go ahead and hit apply. So now I'm going to, the, the offset is what's selected right now, hit control G to group it, and let me fill it in so you can see the offset, okay? So already, I think that you can see the, the font, the original font, a little bit clearer. But we're not keeping that green. That green serves as the cookie cutter that I mentioned earlier. So if we go and we have our offset still selected, we can hold down shift, click the group of bars behind here, go back to our modify panel and subtract. So check it out. And then our bar is gonna be broken apart because it, it was one big object but got cut around, so it's multiple. So just right click while you have it and group. Okay, so see how it like stands out a little bit more? It's a little bit easier to see. So now that's the base of our design. Now all we have to do is set it up for cutting. So I'm going to set it up in a rectangle that's going to be our sign base. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw a basic one and then resize it on my own. So I'll hit the unlock aspect ratio at the top here and we're going to manually type in our sizing. So we're gonna do 12 inches wide and then six inches tall, okay? And then let me also increase my workspace just so it all fits on there. I think it's easier to see. What do we think so far? You guys have been quiet for a little bit. All right, so now we're going to bring this. And you can see that like if we have just the travel clef and the sign, it like really doesn't look good. So we're gonna take this group, make sure it's all together. And we are going to um, stretch it out. I don't know why I lost my words. We're gonna stretch it out so our line, our staff goes just, to, just outside of it, okay? So now our sign's going to have this. Oh, I'm gonna bring the whole thing up because it's kind of low. And this is kind of the base of what we're working with, okay? So now we need to set up the different parts of our design for, for cutting. I want to send this over in one file, so we need to have different steps to this, and each step has its own line color. So this outside box will be cut. I'll go ahead and leave the line color red. This black is going to be engraved. Let's go ahead to the top right and make that line color black since it matches. This is going to be cut as its own object, so I'm gonna make the line color pink as well. And then this is going to be cut, and I'm gonna make that line color blue. So now when we're using uh, Silhouette Studio, we wanna have Business Edition to be able to export as an SVG. So once we have that going, we're gonna select this whole thing, go to File, Save Selection, and then save, your, save the hard drive, and just make sure you choose SVG in this dropdown, okay? So what do you think so far? Do we have any questions so far? So I am going to switch the screen that I'm sharing because we did some moving magic and we worked ahead for part of this. So um, let's go to our Glowforge and we're going to look at the file. So let's go to our dashboard. Let's dismiss this. Go to dashboard. And then you can see I have, oh, I'm not sharing. Got to add it. Okay, so we're in the dashboard, and then we're going to open this file right here. So you can see our file is sitting right here. Now, I have already cut the white acrylic and engraved it because that process does take a while, so I wanted that done for our lives since we have to fill it in. But now we are going to cut our um, black treble cleft. So I have black acrylic in here. Um, it has 3M on the back, okay? So... This 3M, it's gonna make it easier for us to attach things. And so what I always do when I cut 3M is I always reverse it. So if you do not have Glowforge Premium, which you do not need to have, um, you wanna reverse it before you export it. I'm in Glowforge Premium, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip horizontal. I'm gonna keep my design 
fairly together because it doesn't really matter anyway. And then hit my three dots. And I'm going to set my focus right here to where I'm going to cut. So while that's going, let me look at the questions. What was the font name again? I love that once. Love that once. So font Florania. Uh, you can get it from font bundles. So I'm putting it in a comment. And then Adrian's just taking it all in. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind, we have our focus set. I'm having on medium blue acrylic, but you can see that my engrave and cut is set, still set from my last one with um, white acrylic. So let me go through and ignore that. Go through there and ignore that. Um, do I get flashback? I do on occasion. Um, if I get flashback, that means I need to adjust my settings down a little bit um, because it could be too much. Now, I also cut with the masking on the other side. So I don't get any flashback because the paper masking is on the other side. All right, so now we have our treble clef in this option here. So we're going to cut. And then a setting that I programmed in was 3M cut, just to factor in the 3M in there. So I'm doing my speed at 120 and at full power. So before I actually cut it, I want to move my design. And let me go through here, click off of it and find a good spot. So we could ungroup this. Let's go ahead and ungroup and be very careful because it ungrouped all of the little lines. So I'm gonna do the same trick, grab all of it, hold down shift, grab my treble clef, and then I'm going to rotate this to fit in the space a little bit better. So now we have it right there. Okay, so we have it cut. Let's go ahead and print and we'll see how it goes and the back masking i would love to say that it was my idea but it wasn't it's just how it comes from cerulean tide so i just left it on all right so let's go ahead and cut that i'm going to go ahead and leave the camera over here because we're going to work on the acrylic sheet now okay so let's go over there so i'm going to bring my camera down and i'm going to show you the white acrylic that we started for this so here we have the white acrylic that I have already cut and engraved. You can see it's masked on the back. I actually still have 3M on the back. So when I'm done with this, I'm going to have to either scrape it off or tell my, <laughs> tell my friend to just make sure the back of the sign doesn't show. No, I would scrape it off. Okay, so we are going to use a paint marker to fill in these lines. The great thing about the paper masking is that it's going to kind of keep us with a barrier for our paint pen. Now, if you guys are vinyl users and you're familiar with the paint vinyl peel paint, you still want to be reasonable and not like flood it with ink, but we're just going to gently fill it in with a paint marker. This is a Sharpie paint pen. Um, I don't have a preferred paint marker, to be honest. This is just what I had in the as you guys may have just the the stack of craft supplies you just happen to have in your house when you go to the store and they have a sale and you're like mm, why don't i get 10 paint markers they're a dollar each or 50 cents you know so this will take me a couple minutes to fill in so this is a perfect opportunity to ask questions um you could even give feedback you can even say I hate that that's stupid um you know whatever we already had a troll last week so a nice constructive criticism is not a big deal so i gotta shake this because my there we go oh my goodness it like flooded now it got stuck and now it's everywhere okay so we're going to fill this in you could take um you could probably take a small paintbrush and paint in there with normal paint, but I wanted to use a paint marker because I thought it would be easier, but <laughs> it's not really easier right now. It's like coming out of the side, but not the end. Okay. Are we doing this? You know, here we go. So we're just going to fill this in. I think we're going to have to switch to marker. I mean, uh, to actual paint. Because this paint pen is like 
not it. It's coming out the sides. I can see it on this paper plate, but not the end. This is brand new. I opened, see, look at that. I opened this before the live. Okay. So I'm doing a pump. And I'm just spreading the, the paint. Okay, our treble clef is done. So, oh, it's very likely we'll have bleeding with this, but we will figure it out as we go. Oh no, I don't, oh no, I marked my desk. I gotta get that later. I'm gonna get some paper towels, hold on. Well, like I said, guys, if you want a perfect project, it's probably not gonna be on a live. Um, hopefully I can bleach that out. Well, you know what? I bought some really cute, like marble looking contact paper to put on this desk and I was debating doing it. So maybe this was my sign that I need to do that. Okay, paint markers do come down, sides from a tip, it takes, Patience and paint. Yeah, I don't have patience. You know what's weird is I've used this kind of paint marker before with no issue, but today's the day. Today's the stinking day. So we're making it work, and I'm going to dab this to hope it doesn't go too far into it and fill it in. So if you get a paint marker, don't get the fine tip one like I have here. Get the thicker tip because I think it fills in better. You know, so yes, painting with a makeup sponge or I like to use little sponge brushes. I thought a paint marker would be faster. I guess not. So we're just going to kind of Drip it in like that. Crafting is ever without oopsies. Ain't that the truth? Okay. This section shouldn't take too much longer. So we're going to fill it in right there. A little spot here. So let me know your comments or questions while I'm doing this. It might bleed, you know, but we'll just take it one step at a time. So this is broken apart because this is where the name is going. Oops, that's a lot. Yeah, Mark says, I use those and sometimes they just don't feed smoothly. Yeah, I like the, um, the thicker tip ones. But I don't know, I guess I didn't have any. So we're just going to bleed our ink here and try to move quickly. Because I thought I was saving time today, but I guess not. So now I'm going to drip a little pile over here and treat it like a paintbrush and move it like that. So here's my little reserve. We're gonna do some, oh my gosh, I almost said clicking and dragging. We're gonna do some dipping and filling in. Sorry about that guys, I thought this would work. Um, do I have a regular Sharpie? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I probably do. But at this point, you know how like sometimes there's probably a better way to do something, but you've committed to the way that you're doing. You just need to see it through. That's that's me. And it didn't work once tonight with the stupid tray, but maybe it'll work with this. Maybe. We'll see. I'm just using my well and my reserve now. It's just a Sharpie paintbrush. Um, one of the things for acrylic got my order from order from Glowforge. Congratulations, Ruth. So um, 
for acrylic, a lot of times you can work really well with the proof grade settings. So um, if you have acrylic from Glowforge, I would recommend using theirs first because it'll read the QR code. It'll go off of proof grade settings. I always recommend that because it'll help you see if your machine is performing well because it should have no problem with proof grade settings when it's new out the box. If it's not doing your proof grade new out the box, that's something you may want to contact support because that, sh that should not be happening. Okay, we're almost done. We're doing our paintbrush. Yeah, sound like your son's stubborn. You know it. You know it's committed. I'm not a quitter. You know? So I'm just continuing to do this. Tell me, you guys, while I'm finishing this up, like, tell me the projects you're working on. Like, what are we doing? Or are we doing anything? Also, don't forget, I think I mentioned this. Um, I'm going to be at two shows in September. I will be in Charlotte, North Carolina for the uh, Graphics Pro Expo. I'm speaking at the Start Here Academy the, the evening before. Um, the following weekend, I will be in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I am teaching three sessions at Everything Embroidery Market. It will be an intro to Glowforge session, a silhouette design session, and then one where we are combining um, projects with silhouette and Glowforge. I'm very excited because I think if my shipping is correct, I should have my... Um, my filter, my Glowforge filter, which I don't want to use here, but it means I should be able to have a live working machine at this show. So if you guys have seen me at previous shows, that's always been my difficulty um, because it's just me and I fly to them. Having a Glowforge has not been like reasonable. So the last show in Chattanooga, my wonderful friend Belinda brought me her machine to use. But I didn't have in a filter because they were back ordered for months. Um, so now I have a spare machine here that I'm going to ship. And then if the filter comes in time, I'll be able to ship that. And that should just be my like traveling setup now. Not really sure, but we're going to hope for that. Okay, we made it through guys. And then Adrian says she's making a baby sign that has macrame on the bottom. The wood has a scene, a score, a score with flowers and other layer of words that say beautiful soul. That's cool. And Mark's going to be in Myrtle Beach. Awesome. Okay. So let's go ahead and peel this and see what we got. See if I messed it up too bad. Okay. So let's go ahead, grab this. So this is white acrylic from Cerulean Tides. I'm just finding a corner to peel up my masking. <gasps> yes, it looks okay. All right, so let's peel here. And go from there. Also, are any of you in the Cincinnati Dayton area? I am going there for fun for Labor Day. So I'm going to the Cincinnati Zoo. I love the Cincinnati Zoo, but I've only been able to go there in the winter time. So I haven't seen all the exhibits. So I'm very, very excited. Marcella's uh, on vacation this week, but can't wait to come home to continue creating welcome signs and making with her Glowforge. That is awesome. I'm so excited for you. So I am just carefully peeling this up because I don't want to touch wet paint and then touch the acrylic as well. But so far, so good. I got a little tiny bleeding right here. I'll clean it off later. It's a handmade sign, guys. Okay, so we have our paper right here, right here. Tiny little section right here. Okay, so check it out. 
looks pretty good. It's filled in nicely. So now we can put our treble clef on here. So let me, I'm gonna switch the acrylic in my machine. So I have my black right here. It's got my masking on it still. So let's go ahead, take this part out. We don't need it. And then I'm going to load my next acrylic. So I am using a pastel color from Cerulean Tights for this next one. This is Mojito Mint. It's got the paper masking on both sides. I am not gonna put 3M on this one. We're just gonna use glue. So let's pop that in here. And we'll let that process. So while that process, we'll put our treble clef on here. I'm gonna turn this around because I can't apply it upside down. I'm not that good. So this is 3M. Western New York and PA board, but Cincinnati is still eight hours away. Um, and I saw Colorado Springs has a nice zoo. I would love to go, go to Colorado Springs. I was looking at something that was in Colorado to go there, but I have no idea what it is now. Okay, so 3M, super easy. We're just going to find where our opening was. I'm not going to press too hard because my paint is still wet. So I'm just going to very gently press like this and then lift this masking off. Okay. So that's what we're working with right now. Um, also, we're going to have to put this back in because I forgot to cut holes in this, but I'll do that later. Okay. So let's go back to Glowforge. So we have our treble clef all done. So now we're going to grab our design and I'm just going to grab it with the lines and we're going to hit our treble clef, ignore that, and now do the name and cut. We're just going to do our proof grade cut. And since this doesn't matter, I don't have it masked on either side. I'm just going to go ahead, set my focus and I'm just going to do with the proof grade. So you can see the lines moved in here. It's okay because I also um, did that earlier. I have this saved as an SVG on my computer. So um, I don't, I'm just going to re-upload it if I need to use it again. And Ruth asked a good question. How are you going to hang this sign? Um, I'm going <laughs> to put it back in the Glowforge and put holes in it because I just forgot. I forgot to put holes in it. So, um, you know... You win some, you lose some. All right, so we're going to hit that. I'm going to take this, take the Glowforge off the screen. So while that's going, let's look at our, um, our sign from last week. So here we did this sign. You guys remember this? So it's fine. It's got that nice neutral look, but I um, said that I thought it would look nice with black. So here is another one. She's gonna hang it on a hook. I don't know. I you know, sometimes it's like one of those things where I just give it to them. Okay, so I cut out this L. It's got the paper masking on it. I did another letter because who needs two signs with the same letter? So I thought, you know, I have to just make this and take this into my my work office, my day job. So we're peeling off the three on, on here. I really like 3M for these smaller cuts just because the glue would be a big pain. So this is actually a little bit more detailed to take this, this backing off. So I'm just have to be careful. So I'm going to go really slow. See, you know, if I can keep getting this continuous lift. And this is the floral monogram that's linked in my description. This is from Chameleon Cuttables. Um, she's got the whole alphabet with, with for it, which is really gorgeous. Um, so this is obviously the L for Lisa. And then Adrian went got those from Target after the video last week, got the Hex and Circle. I, I really like them, and they're, like, nice and heavy and thick. So I think that they can be engraved pretty easily as well. I haven't done it yet because I'm just updating these, but I think that they went engraved. 
<laughs> root their problem. <laughs> yes, but I, I am going to add holes for her. But like, you know, when I do things for friends or favors, sometimes I'm like, okay, I'm going to make this, but you got to figure out how to put it up. Okay, and then there's little charred pieces on here, if you remember from last week, from the masking. So I'm going to take my, my air duster, get that out of here, and now we can lift up our masking for the other side. I'm going to try to hurry it along because we're starting, we're approaching an hour. Wow, that's a long time. Right, got that one. Okay, just a couple little sections here. Cool. So, what do we think? So, I think they both look good. It's just like a different look, right? So, we have this. This is kind of goes with the neutral light look and then we also have this gorgeous black on wood so tell me in the comments which one is your favorite you know i like them both for different reasons um so i'll put up a picture on instagram with the comparison i think they look really nice i think that this l would look even nicer with the uh matte black but the shiny is really nice too but i mean i'm spoiled with such a beautiful file okay so we i'm gonna get the name out So we have an M, we have a dot, I'll be honest, um, I just dropped a dot inside my <laughs> crumb tray, so after the live I'm going to get it out and add it later. You know, I should have used my tape to pick it up, I didn't even think about it, I just lifted it out. Okay. So now we have this minus one dot over the I or one dot after the misses. I know you guys noticed, so I'm just telling you now that it's missing. Okay. So I got a little bit of extra black here. I'll get that off later. All right. So I'm going to use my little duster, get this extra stuff off. Okay. So for this, we are actually going to use glue. So I have this like Gap Rapid Fuse. This was recommended to me um, from um, Jamie at Craft Chameleon. And so it's supposed to just help it fuse on there better. So we're going to take this off. I wish I would have put 3M because it's so much faster, but I thought you guys would like another method. So here we are. All right, so we're taking off our masking. And this is supposed to be a primer. Does it work? Honestly, I don't know. But I do it because it came in the set. Uh, what's my go-to for cleaning acrylic? I have this really nice cleaning compound, whatever, from Cerulean Tides. So when you order acrylic, at least from Cerulean Tides, that's an option on her website. So I use that. Okay, so I'm going to be very gentle and do just a little bit at a time. Um, hopefully there's some in here. It's been a long time since I've used this glue. Hold on. This glue doesn't last long. I had a feeling this would work, so we're going to switch to my other glue. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to go back to my super tight glue. We used this last week. I'm going to be very gentle and put it on here. We're doing it so we don't get a lot of extra bleeding. You could also put it on with a little paintbrush or even a toothpick. Um, $1.25 for that glue set at Dollar Tree. So yes, it dries out quickly. So be careful. Okay, so we're placing, oop. I forgot I wasn't using 3M and I smashed it and it slid a little bit, but we're okay. Okay, so now we're going to do our next set. And 
remove the masking. This primer, I'll just keep using it. I don't know if it actually works, but you know, it can't hurt. So now I'm placing just a tiny bit of glue. I'm going to get rid of the glue string that's in between those because I don't want that. And then place that here. Okay. So now I'm going to skip the T because the T kind of falls like in a really open area where it's really easy for me to misalign it. And I'm going to start with the second half of her last name. So what do we think so far? I, I mean, a good amount of you are still here. You didn't drop off, which I thought you would. Um, so what do we think so far? Um, what I'm learning is gluing's not worth it. <laughs> I love my 3M. I will happily pay the money for it because it just saves me time and emotional stability. I don't know. Okay. So going back, here's our super tight. Put it on here. I'm just doing tiny, tiny little squeezes in here. So I just get a little bit out. Because this glue is like, is basically comparable to E6000. So it's a nice industrial glue. So it should stay very well. Um, use 3M. But if this falls down, this is like my friend. I see her at least every Sunday at church. So if it doesn't work out, she can just bring it to me and I'll fix it. Okay, so we got our eye, the dot on our eye. Oops. Primer. Yeah, so my friend on Instagram, PB Corner, she found like a different sign maker tool that I'm going to get some tweezers. That is cheaper and works just as well. I haven't gotten it because I don't know what it is. And like, I want to see how their signs work long term with that. Um just because I don't want my stuff falling off. Um, so we're just gluing this. Now I will say glue is useful if you have really big pieces because if you have really big pieces then there's plenty of area and plenty of space to glue it. So you don't have to worry about um, the uh, 3M getting wasted. Could you score the name on the white lining up easier? Um, yes, I could score it and sometimes I do. I don't love scoring though because you when you cut your acrylic, um, when it cuts, there's like a small amount of like shrinking that happens to your final product because the laser cuts it. So when you do that, you have to remember to like make your score line a little bit smaller. Otherwise, you see it when you when you have your pieces on it. And I don't like that. So for me, if I were to do this again, like all over again, I would... Um, make a cardboard template. I like to do a cardboard template and push it right in there. But um, that's not what we did today. Okay, so we have our name in there for now. It's not brown. We have the paper masking on there, okay? Um, so let's see if this is dried enough to start lifting the masking up. I always like to lift my masking after I have it on there. I just want it to be as safe as possible. <gasps> that color is nice, though. She said she wanted teal. Okay, so I'm going to do this like my friend on Instagram, 4 p.m. in Honolulu. She always does her little tweezers. Wow. It's a little bit different on camera. It's a nice color in person. And I'll take some pictures of it after for you guys. And I'll I'll get the dot later. So I like I like this color too. It is Mojito Mint from Cerulean Tides. This is from her pastel collection that came out a million years ago, but I didn't really use it because I was like, I don't know. 
scared. I didn't know what to make and I didn't want to waste my stuff. Okay. So we have our Mrs. Tobin and we are going to, I'm just going to cut new holes in it. Um, I'll just pop it in there. It won't take long. So let me do that last thing and that we'll wrap it up. So if you have any questions, go ahead and start asking them now. Um, and we're just going to do this last. Don't worry about that. Uh, we're just going to do this last set of holes for this. So here's the cut we did. Okay, so I'll show you in Glowforge how I'm going to add these holes too. I think it's kind of useful. Okay, so we will dismiss this and then I'm just going to delete everything in here because I already have it as an SVG file. So, you know, I don't, I don't have to worry about it in here. So I'm just going to do select A and delete. That way we have a clear workspace. We're going to hit these three dots, set focus right here. And I'm going to use Glowforge Premium to create circles to go in there. Can I link the acrylic supplier? Yes, Ruth, since you're, I didn't mean to clap so loud. Since you're on YouTube, I already have it in my description. So if you scroll down, you can find Cerulean Tides and a coupon code. So let's go ahead, insert a shape. We're going to do a circle. I'm going to hit this resize tool right here and make it really small, 0.25, a quarter inch. And let's add it right here. Hmm. I'm debating if I want them. Yeah, I'm going to do it on the edges of the side. So copy, paste. So here's my other one. I'm going to do it on the corners of the sign. Is that what you guys would do? You guys would do the corners of the sign too, right? So let me see. Hold shift. So I'm going to grab both of these over here. Use my align tool. Use the middle right here to align the middle to make sure the holes are in the same spot. And yeah, I mean, I would do, I would do the, the outsides, right? I'm going to do the outsides. Okay. So let's hit print. So the only thing I'm worried about is the focus area and it hitting the acrylic on top, but I think it'll be okay. So let me hit print. It's going to be six seconds. I'm just going to watch it. I'm not going to move the camera. Oh, we're golden. Okay. It's closing up and then I'll show it to you guys. So I'm just closing my glue. Let's get this out of here. So we have all camera. circles came right out. What do we think? So I think it turned out really nice. I just need to take the backing off and scratch off the 3M that was on here before. You know, we are, we're saving our space. So we were using an old piece and it had 3M and I didn't want to scratch it off. So again, with the sign, this is white acrylic so there's two different kinds of whites uh, on the cerulean tides website i use translucent white which really isn't that translucent like you could see through it a little bit but it's a good white black and then mojito mint for this so i'm trying to look on camera it's a little bit more blue um in person i would describe it closer to a tiffany blue Okay, so just to kind of give you a little bit perspective on that, let me turn off the fan so I glow forge. If anyone knows how to get an oil-based Sharpie marker out of my table, let me know. Uh, you know, I, I was going to put a, you know, contact paper on it, but I kind of like this too. So if you know how to get that out of there, let me know. So let me recap. So we had a success. We had, it was fine. 
And then we had something that doesn't work, okay? So let's talk about what doesn't work. These trays do not work with the crumb tray in. The fan hits it and it shifts. So this is this is a no-go. I'll try it one more time with that with taking the crumb tray out. I'm not gonna do it today because we've already hit an hour and that's that's a lot. Um what's the finish on my table? Um, not real wood. I don't know what it is. This is a table from Amazon. It's a sit stand table. I have it linked in my Amazon store. I love it because I can work and stand at it, but um, I don't know how to get that out. Here is our success that we have. This is from, nope, this is from last week. And then we did another version with black just to give a different look. Um, I think they both look really nice. Um, I know a lot of you guys like the black one. Nope, the black one, it's reversed for me. So, oh, goof off and rubbing alcohol. So I'll try that, guys. I'll, I'll fill you in next week. So this, I think, really good success. Um, this, I'm going to give this to my friend's baby, and this is going to go at my work office. And then this, you know, pretty good. Um, we had some issues with the paint marker. Is that a problem with the project? No, that's a problem with me. Um, but we have our nice black acrylic right here. And then we have our name right here. So we have the, the little line and then the beautiful staff behind it. I'm going to get, I don't know, a pretty ribbon to put on here. I'm not super sure. And I need to replace the, the dot to the misses. I might just not and see what happens. But we'll see. So again, thanks, thanks so much, you guys, for joining. I'm really glad that you were here. Um, thank you for toughing it through with me. Um, as always, um, I'm here if you need any help, any questions. I'm trying to make some improvements to my website to make it more interactive for you guys. Um, so I am going to have a submission page where you can ask for specific videos. Um, I have already added a page with my cut settings. It is not exhaustive. I'm in the process of adding to that, but you can find that on my website. Um, also, I um, am going to make, I have a page for like Shop My Craft Room, but I'm going to make a page specifically for like the re the supplies that I like the most and the codes that I have for you guys. So um, we can do there. Ruth, you'll probably have a lot of requests. I hope so. Um, you know, if you guys have been with me this entire year, I've had, you know, I've had a tough year. And um, I have been going through see, like spr sprouts of having ideas, but then I have very long pauses of not knowing what to do and not being motivated. So if I get suggestions from you, that kind of helps me give something to, to ground myself and kind of go from there. So um, check it on my website. I think that you'll find that useful. I do have a contact form on my website already, so you can always send me a message whenever you need. Um, and then I also have my social media that I try to be pretty active on. So I really appreciate you guys. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do that. And then also, if you're subscribed and you watch a video or you like this video, there is now a super thanks option on YouTube. Um, this is a great substitute for someone like me who can't have memberships because I don't have, I have a day job, so I don't have enough time to create content exclusive. But if you really like something, it does allow you to send me something. And that helps me just put more money into my channel getting the supplies for you guys and all of that fun stuff um mark nick is on the exercise bike so he can't come in here but i'll bring him in for another live if you'd like me to have nick do a live with me let me know um next week should still be a thursday i think we're all good for that um and then don't forget to check out i will be in charlotte north carolina and myrtle beach south carolina in september so thank you so much guys i hope you have an amazing night and i will talk to you another time Thank you.